At the age of 10, my parents had a conversation with me that changed the course of my life forever. See, they gave me the talk. It was truly an eye-opening moment for me. I remember it like it was uh, last Tuesday. It was a chilly October. I had WWE Tuesday Night Smackdown blaring on our TV and two piping hot corn dogs in front of me. And I'm talking about like the good kind. <laughs> See, I was enjoying my night. Th that was until my father awkwardly sat in front of me and explained in vivid terms that I would grow up to become a doctor and a priest. <laughs> uh, y yeah, my parents never gave me the other talk. I instead, they gave me the talk to let me know that they'd figured out my life for me. See, my dad had it all planned out. By 24, I would get into Harvard. By 19, I would become a doctor. I don't know how that works out, but in his mind, it did. <laughs> And then by 26, I would get married and have two kids, preferably one boy, one girl, for them. And then, and only then, would I become the Prime Minister of Ethiopia. Uh, yeah, my parents had a very humble bar set for me. But after my talk with my father, I agreed to his terms and conditions. And mind you, I was 10 at the time and I had no ambitions of doing half of his plans for me. But you should have seen him. He had this huge grin on his face. And to illustrate it to you, I found this random black man on the internet smiling. <laughs> <laughs> and no, that is not my father. <laughs> but that smile that Obama has. See, I love that for my dad. My parents gave up everything for my siblings and me. And because of this, I've always felt this need to accomplish dr their dreams through myself. See, my dad was originally born in Ethiopia, where he dropped out of high school to fight in a war no child should have to fight in. He fled to a refugee camp in Ala Ade, Djibouti, where he had my sister and then me after meeting my mother. My parents had these dreams these goals, these things that made them happy. See, my dad, my dad would tell me about how he wanted to become a soccer player for his country, about how he could have been the greatest goalie alive. <laughs> my mom, on the other hand, she had dreams of being a merchant, owning her own small business, making a living. But my parents' happiness, their goals, their dreams were stripped away from them. And because of that, I've always felt this need to make them happy through myself. So I took on their goals. I took on their dreams. I took on their ambitions. And although it was tough, it was something that I had to do. But looking back, I realized that agreeing to my father's terms was more about feeling valued than actually wanting to pursue his plans for me. See, I wanted to hear my father say, I am so proud of you. You make me so happy, Biniam. And although my father's intentions were noble, his desires for myself created this deep-rooted desire to please people, to gain their approval for my own happiness. And although I may be boring you with my life story, I'm not here to just rant about my childhood struggles simply. I'm here to share my experiences with you so you can reanalyze your current situation your current goals, and your current happiness. And now I can't promise you by that simply hearing me speak and then walking out those doors that your whole life will somehow change. But I can promise you that if you take my experiences, apply them to your own experiences, and reanalyze what actually makes you happy and if you're doing them for yourself, that, that will make you happy. So enough talk about you, let's talk more about me. Uh, my name is Biniam Hassan. People call me Ben because they can't pronounce my full name, and I've just rolled with it, but I secretly hate it. Uh, my favorite color is purple. Yes, I love it. And I believe with all my heart that pineapple on pizza is superior with a capital S. Yes, thank you! <laughs> and I love listening to R&B specifically Giveon, <laughs> and I like to work out, even if it doesn't seem like I do, but I do. 
Thank you. <laughs> Almost. And I like to debate. And I like to believe that I'm pretty good at it too. And I really, and when I mean like really, you gotta know that I mean really. Like I really like cats. Yes. His, his name is Simba. I've only had him for a couple months, but he makes me happy. And I like to believe that I'm a trendsetter because I used to have these shoes that were like Crocs, before Crocs were ever a thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in my professional opinion, I had the best style back in elementary school with those shoes. I ran my school. But for some reason, some of the other kids tended to disagree. I still can't figure out why, but they did. And I specifically remember this one incident in fourth grade where some kid had the audacity to ask me, and this is in the prime age of memes and uh, like vines, what are those? <laughs> While pointing at my shoes as if I wasn't rocking what I was wearing. But that moment right there, regardless of the kid meant it as a joke or not, illustrated to me that other kids probably perceived me as weird and different, and not in the good way, in like the, oh, you're weird type of way. <laughs> that hurts. But after that incident, I went home to my parents and I complained. I complained as though this comment made me feel as though my sense of shoes were invalid. Hey, I upgraded though. But that feeling, that feeling translated into me thinking that I, as a person, was invalid. And although my parents didn't have the luxury of buying me new shoes, they went out to a thrift store. And they bought some Nikes and cleaned them well enough to make me believe that they were new. So, me with my brand new shoes, the black Nikes, yes, those. I ran my school, I was king of the hill, I was back on top, I fit in, I was so happy. But even then, I didn't fit in. I didn't conform in because my classmates would still find something else to pick on. Whether it was my clothes, my hair, the size of my forehead, or as they like to call my five head. But they even, on occasions, points out my iffy resemblance to my good mind. <laughs> that hurt the most. It did. And look, I will admit, my forehead is big, but it's not that big. <laughs> but no matter how much I conform to be like them, I would never truly be them, because I would never be happy doing what they do, wearing what they wear. But I forced myself to expect happiness if I became like them. And so many of us in this world try to fit in, try to fit into this idea that others have of us so that we can feel happy. But in the real, in the real world, that will never happen. Because you will never find happiness from the validity of others. By feeling valued by others, you will never feel happy because of that. Happiness comes from inner self, from your own things. And just like I would never be happy being a doctor like my father wanted me to be, and if I continued down the path of pleasing him to somehow take, get, get some type of happiness in the end, I surely would not be here standing and speaking to you. See, I would not be the Bini Hassan that I envisioned for myself. And because of the struggle of conforming for my father's expectations for myself, and the expectations for myself, was I able to allow myself to communicate with my dad and let him know that I didn't want to become a doctor or a priest. See, I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to help the people stuck in our refugee camp. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to help my parents. And it's this communication that we have with whether it be with our parents, our teachers, our friends, or even ourselves that allows us to express to the world our goals, our happiness, and our dreams for whatever makes us happy. So, I want you to take the next moment to picture in your mind whatever makes you happy, or whatever goals that you have that you kept secret. Now on the count of five, I want you to yell this out loud. 
and I really mean this, you the audience, I want you to yell it, mumble it, whisper it, but say it with confidence, say it with conviction. Five, four, three, two, one. I didn't hear any of that. But yes, that makes you happy. <laughs> See, this conversation of the yelling it out loud was a little different for me with my dad. I was actually surprised with it because when I told him my plans, I expected his disappointed face while I had my little happy face. <laughs> See, that's the face that I expected. <laughs> but my dad took this news with joy. Oh, he was happy because all he truly wanted was for me to succeed in whatever I chose. And he had a face so much better than his previous Obama face. Oh, he had this happy dancing face. The one he truly makes when he's truly happy. He had that one. And I realized that my dad made those choices for me because I didn't communicate with him. So he made the choices for me expecting that they'd make me happy. But occasionally, though, he mentions that I am not a pastor or a doctor, as if still holding on to the slight possibility of me changing my mind. My dad is right there. I will not be changing my mind. Yes. <laughs> and this whole talk does not mean that your parents don't know anything and that you shouldn't listen to them. It simply means that if you don't actively take executive control of the decisions in your life, then life will make those decisions for you. So it starts by starting with you, no matter how cliche that sounds. Because you will never discover the beauty of fulfilling your ambitions, things that genuinely make you happy. And if you continue down this road of conforming for others and their own ideals of you, you will live a very, very long and sad life. You will never discover the ambitions of doing what truly makes you happy. So do you. I say, be who you are. Wear what you want with confidence and live the way you want with happiness. Because out of the eight billion people on this planet, only you know what you truly want. So take it.